Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Jeske. I'm one of uh, Onshape sales reps here at EAC. EAC is PTC's leading partner bringing product development solutions to people like you. Conducting the webinar today, we have EAC's lead Onshape technical account manager, Bill Schlund. Barring any technical difficulties, a recording will be distributed at the end of the session. We will be holding all questions until the end, but we encourage participants to submit questions in the GoToWebinar control panel as they come up. We'll be sure to answer them at the end of the webinar. And without further ado, Bill, go ahead and take it away. All right, thanks, Chris. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm going to be going through uh, kind of a real quick introduction of Onshape, but then we're gonna spend most of our time talking about how it's different than your typical uh, system out there and easy ways of accessing the data um, if you're not in the office. So just to kick things off, you know, we'll talk about your typical designer or engineer. Everybody wants to do things quickly, be able to innovate. They want to be efficient. Uh, so typically the way things work is you load some software and you start creating files. And then you want to exchange those files either with one another, else, other people inside the company or maybe with uh, partners or vendors. And uh, so we start sending those files or copies of those files all over the place, uh, either through email, through uh, you know Dropbox, variety of other methodologies. We also want to keep our data organized inside our company, so we'll get a file server and start putting our data on the file server. Uh, the thing is, is that then we got to start worrying about are we overwriting anybody's data? Do I have the latest file version? Things like that. Um, we can get a little more sophisticated, get a PDM, data management system. But again, we're just taking copies of our files. And when you check something out, you're checking out a copy. And uh, so we have lots and lots of files floating around. We got to control all of those. We also have a lot of hardware involved. We have uh, FTP servers, we have network drives, we have pretty decent CAD workstations. Uh, all of those things are typical, right? We've always seen that, but it's not really like that in the Onshape world. Uh, some people can also do a partial cloud solution, but again, you're just pushing files into the cloud and then, you know, copying them around. Now, Onshape is a unified cloud solution. That means that everything that has to do with your data is controlled in the cloud by Onshape. So we have aspects of it like CAD uh, for creating uh, various uh, types of uh, information. We have workflows. We have data management. A couple of things I want to highlight is uh, communication. So one of the nice things with Onshape is that we can uh, easily communicate with one another, whether we are in the office, under the same roof, different countries, it doesn't matter where. Uh, that's the nice thing of a cloud-based system is all you need is a web browser. If we take a look at this, there's different ways of sharing data, um, real-time sharing, collaboration, which is really unique. Also, the ability to follow somebody, so as they are zooming in or panning or highlighting a certain area, you will see it on your screen or everybody will see it on their screen if you use the follow mode, but you can still be independent. Uh, <clears throat> we can have a built-in communication tool there uh, where we can send back uh, you know, text information. We can send uh, images, movies, things like that to one another. And uh, another thing that I also wanted to highlight is administration, something that you don't think a lot about, but if we have multiple people, we want to control really uh, who gets what data and when they get it. Uh, there's all kinds of capabilities to control uh, the different types of groups that get information. We also have the ability to, uh, since we have data uh, and everything is uh, retained, all the information is retained all the time, uh, we can make different versions of the information and share those versions with other people. Um, so the nice thing about it too as uh, an administrator is a lot of times you know say so and so needs access to see this drawing or we've got a new guy and we need to incorporate him into the company and they and the administrator say okay i'll do that as soon as i get back to the office that excuse doesn't exist with onshape you can do it on your phone um and that's usually never very far from you but uh the thing is is that we can access onshape all the time almost from anywhere and so no no matter what your job is, whether you're generating data, creating geometry, or whether you're administrating the, the system, uh, you can do that from any web browser. So let's take a look at Onshape and take a little view of what we can do with it. 
This is my home page. Basically, when I log in, I'm presented with this page. Across the top are things that I've worked on recently. Uh, there are folders below that uh, either I have created or people give me access to so I can get different types of information. Across the very top, there's something here, the App Store. So any additional capabilities that I might want, uh, maybe real-time rendering, finite element analysis, we can go to the App Store and buy an app for that. Also, the Learning Center, really important. This is how you learn on Shape. There's hundreds of different videos and self-paced tutorials to go through. There's webinars. There's all kinds of tips and techniques. And there's also paid uh, training if you wanted to go that route as well. But very easy to learn on Shape. A couple of things I wanted to highlight real quickly. When I, as a person, log in, I can set up some uh, defaults here. So I'm going to be working in English. Um, I want to use inches as my default, how many decimal places I want. Again, anything I create, um, by default, we'll use this, but I can always change it. The mouse control, we realize that people who use Onshape are coming from another CAD system. So uh, we can flavor and have the mouse behave the same way as your CAD system did so that it's easier to pick up and use Onshape and get used to it. Another thing that I wanted to highlight, as I mentioned before, administration and being able to access data and people. Uh, this is a listing of the people in our company. And um, we can also organize those people in terms of different groups. So I can you know, put all the AE technical guys in the engineering group, um, have some manufacturing guys, quality people. Just come over here and create the groups that you want, place the people in them. Uh, and we can do this on, anytime on the fly. Also, one thing I wanted to highlight, if we are generating all this data, we also have workflow capabilities. So in Onshape, there's a built-in release management system. This allows you to uh, take current information. It could be parts, assemblies, drawings, even files, and we can release those. So it goes through a process. We can send that to a person, multiple people, different groups. Uh, they would either approve or reject that, and then uh, you know we go on from there. Another thing that I wanted to highlight um, as far as creating information is that there's an automatic part numbering and document numbering system. So if I have parts, I can have them a prefix associated with those um, or drawings. I can determine how many characters I want in my numbering system, and then it'll give me a preview of that. So parts and uh, files and uh, other types of documents are automatically named uh, when we uh, create those or can be, right? You can name them also, whatever you want, but there is this nice automatic part numbering system there in Onshape. So let's start working with Onshape. I'm going to call up a, a part here. Also, if I wanted to search, I guess one little sidelight in kind of the data management aspect of this is that if I wanted to search for something, I have all these folders. I have all kinds of data out there in Onshape. I can come over here and say, well, I want to look for a particular thing. I can search by part. Is it an assembly? Is it a drawing? I can search by name. I can search by what state is it in. Is it pending? Is it released? Is it obsolete? Um, I can pick on the date. There's lots of different ways of searching for things here in, in Onshape to find what we need to get. So let's start with uh, a simple design that I have here. Um, I already got this kind of partially uh, set up. Um, what I did is I have a sketch. As you can see, I brought in an image, and I kind of sketched over the top of it to get our shape uh, that we wanted to work with. And I just took that sketch and revolved it. So um, I'll kind of hide that for now. So this is the geometry. Again, it's one big block. So you can see um, from the interface of Onshape, these are all the tools I have for creating uh, solid geometry and for patterning it. And then over here, there's some uh, non-parametric edits that we can do. So if we bring in data from an outside system or outside source, we can still modify and, and uh, you know do the things with it that we need to do. Uh, there's also sheet metal capabilities. So all the uh, sheet metal capabilities are right under this Pull down. The nice thing is that everything I need to do in Onshape is right here across the top. On the left is our feature tree. Down here, uh, it's also a, a multi-body or a multi-part system. So we can take this one big block and break it into multiple parts should I choose to do that. And that's actually what I want to do right now is kind of break this up. So I'm just going to do a split. I'm going to say, let's split this part and we'll split it um, maybe along this face right here. And we'll say, um, okay. So now we have two parts. And then we can say, let's split, uh, split this, and we'll split that maybe along this base part down here. So now we have three parts. We have the part that we see right here, which is kind of the middle. We have the bottom part, and we have the top part. And I can assign, oh, let's do that. Let's assign different colors to those. 
So I'll pick on my top part, um, and we'll say let's make that red. Let's take the bottom part, and we'll make that kind of a, a darker color. And then our middle part, oh, that's our bottom part. Let's make him kind of dark, yep. And our middle part, we'll say let's make him kind of transparent like that. So very easy for us to kind of manipulate this. We have three different bodies out here. I can also associate, obviously, different densities to those. This isn't technically an assembly yet. It's just a part made up of three bodies. If I wanted to make an assembly of this, um, I can just go and say, let's create an assembly, and I can bring in those three parts. I can merge them in one at a time or bring them in one at a time, make this face align with that face, so on and so forth. I can bring all three in together since they're all kind of originally oriented uh, in the same way uh, we can do that. I'm going to take this bottom part, and I could just say, let's just fix him in place um, so he doesn't move. But um, here we have our three parts. If we have three parts, we certainly have a bill of material. We can see that here. Uh, we can see their state, um, part one. Actually, part one, let's just call him like top. Part two, we'll just call him like the base. And then the middle part, and I'll just call it like mid. But you'll notice our bill of material can go in and either pull out uh, information from the part, or if we put something in the bill of material, it pushes it into the part. In this case, I just changed their names. This bill of material and the way that it's set up here, if I wanted to add other columns to it and things like that, we do that. But uh, at this point, the bill of material that we see here is the exact same one that we would see in a drawing. So and speaking of drawings, let's make a drawing. Just so you can see that, I'm just going to say, let's create a drawing. And I'm going to use a company title block that I made just to show that you can create your own. Obviously, there's a bunch of default title blocks that uh, and different forms that come with the, the system. But you know, here we did our EC, EAC. And here, it's also pulling out different information uh, from our part. But I can make drawings of the three different parts. In this case, I say, let's make an assembly drawing. So let's grab that assembly that we did. And I'll say, well, maybe let's put a view here. Um, we could put maybe a top view up above it. And then maybe I also want to create an isometric view over here. And in this isometric view, um, let's kind of have him maybe shaded. And I'll kind of zoom in a little bit. And I'll say, let's, uh, let's make like a section view through the middle of our guy right here. I'll we'll kind of move it right there. So now we have a section view of everything. I can go in and start creating dimensions, um, maybe between the base and maybe the top lip of this. When I create this dimension, I can go in and determine how many decimal places I have on it. Um, I could say, you know, I want to be plus minus symmetric tolerance. We could say plus or minus, you know, 50 thousands. And so creating dimensions, updating things, uh, really easy to do. As you can see, these are just big blobs as a cross-section here. We haven't really done anything to it. And up until now, this looks like any other CAD system. Uh, so now we're going to start to distinguish this a little bit from your typical run-of-the-mill CAD system, is I'm going to invite some people to help me. Um, I've got this a good start on this that I want to create. It's basically a little handheld. What I want to do is get some help for that. The first thing I need is some help on the top part up here, the part that's red. So I'm just going to say, let's put a comment on there. And a comment is, um, I don't know, help with this. And I'm going to send this to somebody in our company. So I just do an ampersand, and I start typing in their name. And here we got a couple of Nicks in our company. I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to assign it. Nick. This is actually going to be kind of a to-do. It's a formal request instead of me just saying, can you help? It's sort of like, here's your job. Help me. So I'm going to say assign this to Nick. And I just say assign that. So it says, now you are sharing your assembly, your parts here with Nick. I'll say, okay, good. So he gets an email and there's a hyperlink in it saying, Bill's inviting you to uh, work on this food processor with him. Nick clicks on the hyperlink and logs into Onshape. So he has an account. And we'll say, let's sign in. Here's what I sent him. Can you help with this? If he clicks on it, he sees the image. 
And if he clicks on that, it brings them in to my session. So you can see that Nick's, we'll kind of see his screen over here. He can see that conversation now can start between he and I um, about this particular thing. There's a little comment on this part. So if he selects that, it highlights the part. So now he knows the thing that I'm asking him help with. And uh, you know we can t continue the discussion, but basically I need him to kind of develop this part a little bit. Now remember, I invited him in here to work on this part. I invited him in to just look at it right now. So he has different menus than I do. These are just viewing menus. You can create cross sections and you can add comments and things like that, you can measure things, but really that's all you can do. What we want to do is have him actually start doing some work. So he could say, um, back to me, you know, I need rights. I need rights to do this stuff. And so I'd see that and it's like, oh yeah, sure, I understand. Uh, so I'm gonna come over here, talk a little bit about everything that I've created so far today is kept here. I didn't have to do save or anything like that. Every command that I've done is here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a version at this point. And this is at this point in, in the history of this part, this is where I'm gonna have someone helping me. So I'm gonna use this as a, a, an opportunity to create a version. So in this particular version, um, I'm just gonna call it like, before Nick. So this version is just kind of a, you'll see it in the tree right here. And from here on out, Nick's going to get all this stuff. But um, now we know when he started working on it. We know the exact same date and time when this happened. And this will be here forever. We can always go back and see uh, what was done. Now I could have him working exactly on this as we see here. In fact, like if I come over, let me, let me make my screen a little bit smaller for you here. So you can see Nick's over here, I'm over here. If I come over and say, um, I wanna make some changes to this, Nick would see this. I'm gonna go over to, oh, go over to the main part here. If I came in and said, I wanna make a round right here, it adds that round. As soon as I hit the check mark, look over on Nick's side. He sees it too, right? Because we're working on the same part at the same time. As a matter of fact, um, he can lock himself in. So now when I zoom mine, I can say, this is the part. I need you to hollow this out. I need you to put a hole in the top right here. He is seeing exactly what I'm pointing at. So it's a really good communication tool, although he can make it independent, his spinning as well. But there's that follow mode that I alluded to earlier in the PowerPoint that is really good help for this. So now that I've created this moment in time when Nick's going to take place and start helping me, um, one of the things I'm going to do is actually make a branch here as well. And this particular branch, I could call it like uh, ECN 123. But really, we're changing the part potentially. So I'm going to say, let's create that branch. And basically, I'm going to tell Nick, work on this branch of the design. You notice here? Here's our main trunk of the tree, all the stuff that I've been doing. And now this little branch is what Nick's going to be working on. So he's going to be needed to work on that branch. And so he can certainly see that um, from right here. He can click on that branch and now he can start working on it. So now he's ready to go, except I still haven't given him any rights to do anything. So I'm going to go back to that little sharing. And remember here, he can view. Um, I could hit the X and now he can't work with, work on it anymore, but I need his help. So I'm gonna come in and say, let's allow him to edit things. And now I update it. Remember he asked for his rights to change things. So I've given those to him now. All he has to do is refresh his browser. And you'll notice that the menus on the bottom will go away. And the menus that I have to be able to do full editing will appear here at the top. So now Nick can start working on his design. And remember, he's working on a branch of that design, right? And I'll be kind of working on my stuff over here. So if we go back and take a look um, at what Nick's doing, they can say, okay, I needed to work on this. I'm gonna take uh, the base part, kind of hide that. I don't really need the, the middle part right now either. This is what I'm concerned with. Uh, one of the things Bill asked me to do is put a hole in this thing. So I could say, let's put a hole maybe right there. So now we've got a hole in our part. Um, if we turn on the middle part here, 
we can see that maybe I want to have this be a little bit bigger out here. So um, I can come in and say, let's just make this face a little bit bigger. And we'll say maybe uh, maybe a little bit smaller than this. There we go. So now it's exactly lined up with the outer portion there. And then finally, the last thing I want to do is maybe just kind of come in and uh, shell this out. So it's very easy for Nick to come in and say, let's shell this guy out. So now he's done a little bit of work. Part's coming along a lot nicer than it was when he started. And again, he's not really working on any of the other parts. If we turn them on, you know, they're still here. You notice over here, I don't see anything because he's working on a different branch. Now I can go back to um, my drawing and kind of continue to work on that. I can come over here and say, you know, maybe I want to put in um, a bill of material here. Let's see your bill. I can put it in maybe right here. So just kind of doing some cleaning up on the drawing, kind of finalizing it a little bit. And we still see that everything is still uh, solid here. So I'm going to come back to our part studio, which is where I'm working that has all this information. Interesting thing about the part studio uh, as a sidelight is it can store all kinds of information. So here um, I also have a folder full of images, and we can see those different images down here of you know the part that I want. There's also a requirements documents. So really anything that has to do with this product is in this part studio. But um, let's go over and do some other work. Um, I'm going to say, let's isolate this guy. And what that does is it leaves the other parts there, but it's meaning I want to focus on this. Because remember, this middle part is just a big, thick section. So I'm going to say, let's hollow it out there, and let's hollow it out on the bottom. Right? So now we can kind of see through it. And you notice I'm not really, uh, can't really pick on the other parts when I'm in this isolate mode um, at all. We could say, we could go in and then um, change that that isolation. Uh, one of the things that we can do too is we can edit the appearance of things. You see with the right mouse button, there's all kinds of capabilities um, that we have here. So we'll say, let's take um, exit isolate, I guess what we wanted to do. So everybody's back. Um, now that we have this, uh, Nick sends me a message, right, that, that he's finished. So I can just come over here and take a look at what he's been working on. Um, just pick on his branch. I can see, yeah, that actually looks pretty good. So I can just come in and say, I like what he's done. I want to incorporate that into our design. So I'm just going to come in here and say, let's merge that in. So his information is automatically merged into mine. So now we have this part's hollow, this part's hollow. We've got our base part. Things are looking good. Um, I'm going to come over to my assembly now that I have a hole for this. Um, I can start adding other components like the top component here for this, um, other things like that. One of the other aspects of this is that we can also access this um, from a variety of different ways I mentioned before. And in this particular case, what I want to do is say I'm going to have someone who's maybe off-site and he is wanting to access this maybe with some new ideas or something like that. So I'm going to share my phone with you. But we're seeing what I have on my iPhone here. When we select on that. We can pick on it. And I have on shape here where I can start working on this part. I can zoom in, zoom out. Rotate it. Again, just moving a finger around allows me to rotate it. Two fingers close together or far apart, zooms in, zooms out. Real straightforward types of things like that. Um, I have access to the model tree. And this is our assembly, so we can see the different components here. Um, so all of those capabilities are here. I have access to the part studio itself. And then also to the drawing. So this is full on shape, but on my phone. In fact, the interesting thing is one out of every six people that use on shape are using it from their phone. And that's what I was talking about before from administration. Maybe you need to uh, 
look at something to get it released. Um, you can do that from anywhere. Just pick up your phone and get access to it uh, right away. So while I'm here, I also have capabilities. So I could say, let's come in and maybe put in a radius at the top of this guy and put in a radius. We can see that it's been added here. Um, if we go back to the main menu, uh, let's move my phone over to the right. We can see it's been added here. If we go back to our drawing, so the drawing will highlight uh, an area right here in yellow if it's out of sync with everything. So I'm just going to say, let's update this. We'll notice that uh, the cross sections have all updated. We can see that and uh, everything has taken place the way that we would expect, right? Even with the, the round being added right up here at the top that we added by the phone. So the interesting thing with Onshape is, especially with the way, uh, you know, industry is changing. Uh, people aren't always under the same roof. They're needing to get at data on all different times of the day, uh, depending on the need. Uh, you can do that. You can do it with your phone. You can do it with your tablet. You can do it from an internet cafe. As long as you have access to a browser, you have access to Onshape. Everybody's on the same page. Uh, so everybody's using the same software at the same time, the same rev. They're working on the same models. Uh, this demo took me a little while to do, right? Maybe 25 minutes so far. The thing is, is if all three people were working on it at the same time, it would have taken maybe five minutes to do this. But again, it's just me here, so I had to do the jobs of three people. The thing is, is that Onshape is incredibly efficient and you don't lose work. And that's the most important thing is you never lose your work. Everything is preserved. You can go back to anything at any point as we saw over here in the history. Everything that we wanted to access is available to us anytime that we want. So with that, that kind of brings us to a close of what I wanted to highlight today, talking about the different ways of accessing Onshape in an ever-changing world.